the book of Ezekiel chapter 25 and these chapters, chapters 24 through 32 verse 33 concern the Babylonian war. In the previous chapter, we covered Jerusalem and deceived Christendom, those who will be deceived by the false Christ at the sixth trumpet. And now we move on to the Ammonites. So with a word of wisdom from our father in Jesus name, verse one. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. And the Ammonites are from Ben Ami, which was one of Lot's sons from his two daughters, Moab and Ammon, being the names of the people who came from that. But Ben Ami means son of the people, which is what politics means of the people. So Ammon and Moab are symbolic of the two wings of the hidden dynasty of politics, which is communism. And we'll see that as we get further into this chapter. The second seal of Revelation chapter 6 concerns a red horse. And that second seal lines up with the hidden dynasty of politics. Having covered the hidden dynasty of religion in chapter 24, which corresponds to the first seal, now we move on to the hidden dynasty of politics which corresponds with the second seal of Revelation chapter 6. And if you break the word Ammonites all the way back to its root, you'll find that it means to hide. It's number 6004 in your Hebrew dictionary of your Strong's Concordance. To hide, as in the hidden dynasty of politics, which means of the people, which is what Ammonites means. So again, son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites. This is symbolic of one of the wings of the political system and prophesy against them and say unto the Ammonites, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thou said, aha, against my sanctuary when it was profaned. And ultimately that happens at the sixth trumpet and against the land of Israel when it was desolate because of the desolator Satan, when he appears as the false Christ and against the house of Judah, when they went into captivity. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. And I will make Rabbah a stable for camels, and the Ammonites a couching place for flocks, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, as opposed to the false Christ. The men of the east of old were the Babylonians, so to take that to the futurist sense, that would of course be Satan's locust army, the fallen angels. For thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast clapped thine hands and stamped with the feet and rejoiced in heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel, behold, therefore, I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and will deliver thee for a spoil to the heathen. And I will cut thee off from the people, Ammonites meaning of the people, politics, and I will cause thee to perish out of the countries. I will destroy thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, as opposed to Satan or anybody else. They're going to know who God is at the seventh trumpet. And this is speaking of the destruction of the political system. That covers one wing of it. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab. Here's the other wing of the communist system from the cities and his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshemoth, Baalmeon, and Kirathaim. And Moab was the other son that Lot had by one of his daughters. Beth Jemosh means house of deserts, and that's the dwelling place of evil spirits, the deserts, as we know from the New Testament. Baal Meon, habitation of Baal, which is Satan, Satan's dwelling place, not God's. They're not Christian, in other words. They're communistic atheists. Kiriathaim means double city, so this includes Ammon and Moab, double city, a double standard. The two wings of the communist system, they both have the same goal, global communism, but it's disguised as democracy, but it's really communistic atheism, isn't it? On one hand, you have the Stalinists, and on the other hand, you have the Trotskyites. And this is made perfectly clear in the book of Amos in chapters 1 and 2. It says there that Moab burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. Speaking, obviously, of the Bolshevik Revolution, where those two wings came from, Trotskyism and Stalinism, the two wings of communism. They use different methods, but their goal is the same, global communism. 
So God says to Moab, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Bethjamoth, Baalmion, and Kirathium, unto the men of the east, that's the locust army, ultimately, with the Ammonites, and will give them in possession that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations the hidden dynasty of politics being destroyed at the seventh trumpet. And I will execute judgments upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom, which means red, that red nation, the communistic atheistic system, not the Christians of Russia, but the system, Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon him, therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom, who is also mentioned in Amos chapters 1 and 2, and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman and and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, as it's written in the 38th chapter of this book of Ezekiel, as well as chapter 39. That's what ultimately happens to Edom, saith the Lord God. And again, Edom means red. We're talking about the hidden dynasty of politics, which corresponds with the second seal of Revelation chapter 6, the rider of the red horse, which is given a great sword to take the peace from the earth. And Esau was cursed to live by his sword. Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah, as we know from 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 22, but that happened again in the early 20th century with the Bolshevik Revolution, when the bones of the king of Edom were burned into lime. The king of Edom was Tsar Nicholas II, who was of Judah, which is a Germanic dynasty. He was cousin to the Windsors, the scepter of Judah, who are from Germany, which is from Judah. Germany is Judah, in other words, in the prophetic sense. When understanding who God is addressing, Moab burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime, and then at the end of the Second World War, Edom took vengeance upon the children of Judah, as you can read of in the book of Obadiah. And you can look back at history and understand what that's speaking of. And it was that same year, 1945, that the United Nations was set up. And there you have the benchmark of the hidden dynasty of politics, the United Nations, in 1945. And the Christian nations, as well as Edom, Russia, occupying the land of Germany, Judah. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines, the migratory ones, that's the curse of Cain, have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred, the old hatred being the enmity of Genesis 3.15, we're talking about the Kenites now, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out mine hand upon the Philistines, and will cut off the Kerathims, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. Kerathims means executioners. Executioners always wear black. So inasmuch as we're speaking of the Kenites here, the migratory ones, which was the curse of Cain, as we know from Genesis chapter 4, we're now talking about the hidden dynasty of economics and the third seal, that black horse, Kerathims, executioners, got it? Behold, I will stretch out mine hand upon the Philistines and will cut off the Kerathims and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. And we're talking about what happens at the seventh trumpet here, ultimately. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them.